6 o'clock on your Wednesday morning. We have breaking news right now from Littleton. We've just learned about five minutes ago that two people were killed in a crash. Two civilians, actually. Mm -hmm. Santa Fe has been shut down for hours at Mineral. Yeah, tragic story. It started with a pursuit of a driver down in Douglas County, ended with a crash in Littleton. Channel 2's Jim Hooley has been talking to police officers and investigators. He has the very latest. Jim. Good morning. We just talked to representatives of deputies from the Douglas County Sheriff's Office, and they told us the very sad news that, yes, indeed, two people have been killed here, two innocent people that were in a car coming across Mineral here westbound when this vehicle that was being chased by Douglas County deputies coming northbound on Santa Fe came through the intersection and struck their vehicle. All of this started with the chase of a stolen car going at a high rate of speed down by Daniels Park. I believe it was shortly after 2 o'clock in the morning. They chased the vehicle north on Santa Fe. They put out stop six in Highlands Ranch. The vehicle went over those and kept on going until it got here into this intersection. And that's when it hit the vehicle with the two people coming westbound on Mineral. Those two people were killed. The driver and the suspect vehicle was taken into custody. And we understand there may be a second vehicle involved as well. That driver that was uh, driving along with the suspect in the stolen car, he was able to get away. That car was recovered a short time ago, but uh, that driver was able to get away and elude police. So what we have here again, two people killed in this uh, officer involved chase here out of Douglas County and Santa Fe closed now in both directions at Mineral up to Aspen Grove. Live in Littleton this morning, I'm Jim Hooley, Channel 2 News. All right, Jim, thanks very much. Uh, keep us updated. And as we were talking about, life is fleeting. I mean, these two people were going about their business this morning thinking about maybe going to the grocery store and now they're dead. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's tragic. All right, also breaking this morning, a deadly RTD crash in Denver involving the A line goes out to the airport. Police say a man was killed after the train hit him at Smith Road in Quebec. This is near I-70 in the Stapleton area. The man has not yet been identified. We don't know why he was hit on the tracks. The A-line was shut down for a while, but we understand now it just reopened just a few minutes ago. That is the good news. Time mm -hmm. right now, 6.02 on your Wednesday. A live look outside. And for right now, we've been singing a foggy day in, in Denver, Denver town. town. And That's some of that fog is turning into ice. Yeah, it's happening right now, Chris Domer. Good there it is. Look at this. This is from uh, that accident scene down at Santa Fe and Mineral. Here it uh, comes. Yeah, here it comes. And uh, I presume that's fog that's kind of <laughs> freezing. Yeah, that's freezing fog, Ernie and Chris being blown around by the wind. Boy, that is not good to see. Actually, that's terrible. All right, here is our pinpoint weather alert day. Uh, so it's primarily for the afternoon evening rush hour for snowfall, but obviously this morning we're dealing with that freezing fog now, and that was not expected at all. Here's our Bacchus and Shanker camera. You can see we are just completely fogged in. I mean, really low visibilities out there. We have a winter weather advisory in place. You can see it in purple here for the entire front range until 5 a.m. tomorrow. We are expecting two to five inches of accumulation up and down the front range. Here are the reasonings and some of the things to look for with this pinpoint weather alert date. We're going to see bands of snow this afternoon into the evening rush air, two to five inches and a slick evening drive for sure. And the temperatures are in the teens and 20s right now, and that's as warm as it's going to be today. Here is a radar and you can see the snow just beginning to roll into the west slope. Aspen, believe it or not, the school district having a snow day today. They got 10 inches of snow overnight and it's going to snow there hard all day. That cannot happen very often when they cancel school up there. And that snow is now invading I-70 up towards the tunnel. It never really made it to the tunnel yesterday, but we will see that occur today, even in the Summit County. And we will also watch that freezing fog here across the front range. But here we go. Timing out the bands of snow rolling in. Light snow is already in motion at noon in northern Colorado. And then you can see some of the deeper blues swing across Denver. Snow will already be in play for the evening rush hour. Here it is at 4, 5, 6 p.m. It's still snowing across the Front Range and over the Eastern Plains. By 9 o'clock tonight, things start to taper off into tomorrow morning. Coming up, we'll pinpoint some of the forecast amounts here across the Front Range, Ken, but it's really not good to see that freezing fog out there at all this morning. No, it's going to be a messy day, uh, as you've been talking about weather-wise and even getting to work. Uh, but uh, CDOT crews know about it. They, they tweeted out that they are expecting winter storm in the afternoon commute, so they should... Uh, uh, where they wanted all of us to know that the plows are going to be out. Uh, they're going to pre-treat these roads. And as motorists don't pass the plow, uh, give these guys the space they need to get the job done so we can try and get to work and home without too many issues. Uh, this is a live look at the delays now. Uh, this is east along I-70 as they were still dealing with construction. It was late and getting picked up east along 70 at York. So it is slow from federal, but then it kind of breaks loose and out towards the airport. Everything is clear. We've
we've had reports that some of this drive along I-70 could potentially be slick. Uh, one accident was called out along the ramp from 225 to 70. They couldn't find anything, but the ramp is backed up. And then uh, you do have that Santa Fe and Mineral closure in place. Santa Fe looking at both sides blocked westbound Mineral and the light rail station leaving uh, the Mineral line is still closed. But in this area, drive times and speeds are slow. There's some problems off towards the Commerce City area east of 25, but this one's going to be here for quite some time. So if you are heading out towards the light rail lines from the Mineral station, be advised that everything is different this morning because of the investigation in that area. Jim Hooley is live there. We'll check in with him here coming up for the very latest. Guys. All right, another top story this morning. The Denver Classroom Teachers Association plans to deliver handwritten letters supporting DPS teachers to the state capitol. Thank you so much for joining us at 6.05. I'm Ernie Bjorkman. And I'm Chris Brente. Natalie picked a good day to be off. She did. Stay at home as the yeah. snow starts to fall. But the big headline story, the teachers union asking supporters to write letters to Governor Jared Polis to demand that he stay out of the negotiations ahead of this potential strike. Right now, the Colorado Department of Labor has until next week to decide whether or not to get involved. And to keep up to date on this story and on breaking news, especially this morning, click the alert me button at the bottom of any article. You can sign up for text or email alerts as soon as we get new information. It is the biggest story on KWGN.com right now. A runner attacked by a mountain lion on a popular trail is getting worldwide attention. He saves himself by killing it. Channel 2 has just learned that runner, the runner killed the juvenile mountain lion using his hands, his arms and feet to suffocate it. We mm. told you yesterday morning the man was attacked on a trail at Horsetooth Mountain open space just west of Fort Collins. The lion lunged at him and the runner fought back with his bare hands. The man, who has not yet been publicly identified, had bites on his face and his wrist. He has since been released from the hospital, but so far he says he's going to wait a few days to see if he wants to make a public statement. This morning we're also hearing from this man who survived a mountain lion attack years ago. Back in 1998, Andy Ferguson was hiking in Roxborough State Park when he was attacked not once but twice by the same mountain lion. He finally broke free. Now Ferguson credits a pocket knife and gouging the eyes of the mountain lion for his survival. Thankfully I got out of its claws, out of the grass, but a little bit grabbed the skin, jumped back up on the trail. It launched at me again, missed, and now 90 yards down the trail I'm running backwards with my shirt and my pack in front of me just screaming at this line, you know, uh, back off, back up, just screaming at this thing, hoping it, it kind of stops, but it didn't. It was locked in. Well, Ferguson spent four days in the hospital with injuries to his head and neck. He shares his story of survival as founder of Lion King Ministries. He's also an inspirational speaker. Part of I-70 reopened in Glenwood Canyon this morning after that huge rock slide shut down the road for hours yesterday. Both eastbound lanes are open as well as one westbound lane. Yeah, take a look at the map. When the road was closed, the suggested detour went through Steamboat Springs. That is a three and a half hour detour. Well, that was something else. And the rock slide happened around one yesterday morning with rocks the size of SUVs tumbling down onto the road. Thankfully, no one was under that. But the amount of rocks, dirt, and boulders that fell onto the westbound lanes forced an immediate closure. About three of the boulders from this morning, I would say, are about the size of a Suburban. And in a, the amount of debris, we have about 250 to 350 cubic yards. And I can break that down to you. That's about 25 to 30 dump, lo dump truck loads of rock. So um, it's pretty substantial. So again, to keep you updated, they've cleared the road uh, westbound. Just one lane of westbound through the Glenwood Canyon area is open. Both lanes of eastbound I-70 through Glenwood Canyon yeah. have reopened. And the video tells the story. Uh, take a look at this video from Glenwood Canyon three years ago. Mm. We actually caught it at the moment of the rock slide. That shut down a 24-mile stretch of I-70 for five days. Wow. Crazy. You always see the signs, right? I know. And, and you always wonder what the, like the cages are up on the rocks, and that's the stop. Yeah, rock exactly. slides. Hey, a Douglas County teacher now facing termination because of tweets that she wrote last month. Michelle Grissom accused a student in Kentucky of being involved in this viral video between teenagers and a Native American. She said he was part of the, quote, Hitler youth. Well, turns out she had the wrong student. The teacher's now on administrative leave, and she will get to appeal, but the final decision will be up to the school board. A group of parents at the board meeting last night, well, they support firing her. We have a teacher in our school district here in Douglas County 
that is bullying people in Douglas County in her classroom and on the other side of the country simply because of their Christian Catholic religious beliefs. And that is completely and totally inappropriate. The parents are part of a protest ahead of the board meeting. They're upset with the district because they say board members refuse to let them speak during the meeting in public comment. Now, the board says their policy is that comments can only be made about items that are specifically on the meeting's agenda. Well, at 610, uh, you're dealing with a closure down along Santa Fe and Mineral as the investigation into an overnight accident continues. Jim Hooley is live there with the very latest, but the light rail lines from the Mineral Station are also impacted. Chris. All right, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer watching the freezing fog out there this morning, and then we will watch for accumulating snow here this afternoon. We'll talk about both in just a few minutes. And let's go back to that accident. We're following breaking news. The pursuit of a driver in Douglas County led to that fatal crash. We just learned two people have been killed. The sheriff's office says the two people killed were not any of the suspects. And in Denver, the RTD A line just reopened minutes ago after a man was hit and killed by a train. You're watching Daybreak on Colorado Zone Channel 2. At 614, we're following several breaking news stories on Channel 2 this morning. A man dead after being hit by an A-line train early this morning. It happened at Smith Road in Quebec. The man has not been identified. The A-line was shut down for a while, but has reopened just before 6 o'clock. And the Douglas County Sheriff's Office confirming about 20 minutes ago that two people were killed in a crash on Santa Fe Drive in Littleton. It all started as a pursuit by Douglas County deputies. The Sheriff's Office says a suspect T-boned a vehicle in Santa Fe and killed the two innocent people inside. The driver they were pursuing has been taken into custody. Both directions of Santa Fe South shut down near Aspen Grove Shopping Center. There is no estimated time for reopening. And also the RTD Mineral Station closed. That means the C and D lines will have delays and uh, they start and end the downtown Littleton Station. Yeah, and while Jim Hooley is down there giving us updates, he's saying that the uh, fog down there is starting to freeze up a little bit. So we have some freezing fog in the Littleton area. And Chris Tomer joins us with a pinpoint alert weather yeah. day. Yeah, we've got it all, don't we? We've now, got why did to... you say, we said it's freezing fog. Yes. And you said that's terrible news. It is. Any sort of freezing road, rain huh? is terrible. I mean, it's going to freeze to your windshield. You'll have a problem with that. Could be on the roadways, could be on anything. If you have a flight out, it's going to get on the yeah, plane. But I mean, snow later today, though. Yes, and then we'll get that snow chance absolutely, Ernie. But here, look at this. Oh, boy. This is the thickest fog we've had in a while around here in the Denver area. I mean, there's just no indication of it being this thick. So this is a um, what we call now casting event here. So we'll just have to keep a very close eye on it. Uh, and it's thick. Look at that. I-25 right there. I've been watching it. This is a really cool perspective. This gives you an idea. It's all down here. This is the view from Lookout Mountain, our one of our Bacchus and Shanker cameras. Completely clear sky, and we're down here. The city of Denver is located down here. We had a cold front swing in here, and it has totally knocked us with this northeast wind. This northeast wind is part of the whole formula for the storm system today. It's going to keep the temperatures way down, so whatever falls today, will stick to the roadways and whatever falls with this northeast wind will be enhanced. So the snowfall that we have in the forecast this afternoon is partially because of that northeast wind, partially because of the storm system itself. But you can see the percentages all going up. The 20s this morning are for the freezing fog. That's my guess. And then the increases by the time we get to the evening rush are all for snowfall. Here it is on the pinpoint weather app. You can see it right here. So we'll start in the teens and 20s. In fact, a lot of these numbers are not even taking into account the fog this morning that we had. Snow by this afternoon is likely. That is one of the main features of the forecast. So here we go. We have bands of snow rolling in. This is the lunch hour and they continue. So we're already going to have snow on the roadways here for the evening rush. And then as we head towards six o'clock, it continues with those areas of snow, even some bands of snow. Uh, so you're going to see some wide ranging totals here. Uh, I'll show you those in a second. And then it tapers off after 9, 10 o'clock tonight, and we should be in much better shape by tomorrow morning. Two to five inches of accumulation here across the front range. Zooming in a lot of twos and fives from Fort Collins down to Boulder, Loveland, Denver, Highlands Ranch, and a nice swath of snow up I-76. We even have some areas uh, indicating six and seven inches across parts of the metro area, but a lot of twos, threes, fours, and fives. And again, if you get underneath one of these bands of snow, you're going to get hit. 
with some snow very quickly. Pinpoint 70 forecast, so uh, freezing at best. We did that at probably the midnight hour. Now we're in the teens and 20s for the rest of the day. Tomorrow, 23 drier. Friday, Saturday, Sunday looking pretty good at this point with 40s and dry conditions through Sunday. All right, Ken, we're going to have to watch that fog because that could be a real issue. Well. well, and it's keeping our chopper grounded today, so we can't see these roads from the air, but we'll definitely monitor it off to the west. As you were mentioning, Chris, uh, it is icy. It is snow packed. Uh, that's I-70 around Vail. You can see the uh, flakes coming down. Plows are out as well, and CDOT's just kind of giving everybody a heads up. They know the storm's coming in. They need to do the work that they need to do, so we need to give the plows the space they need. This is I-25, or uh, rather I-70 at I-25, right through the heart of downtown Denver. Those delays still exist, breaking loose uh, east of the Coliseum. The Santa Fe and mineral closures, we've been telling you all morning long, impacting the light rail lines in and around the mineral station. Santa Fe still dealing with a closure. Same deal with minerals, so that area is going to be heavily congested as we get deeper into the rush speeds along 25 and 76. They're slow. They've cleared the earlier problems, so the backups they kind of just linger right now. If you're heading out to the airport, the eastern drive along I-70 is approaching 20 minutes. Uh, if you are traveling in from the uh, foothills, Arvada, Wheat Ridge, uh, it's right around 20 minutes, and we have had some scattered reports that I-70 could be slick in some areas in town, guys. So uh, watch yourself as you head out. All right, well, if you have kids, this could be really scary. New this morning here in Colorado, Internet sex crimes have nearly doubled in the last three years. Yes, yeah, startling new numbers coming from the Colorado Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. Channel 2's Drew Engelbart joins us live in studio to break down the new report. Does not sound good, Drew. Startling numbers is right, Chris. Members of the task force say that advanced technology has had a major impact on this spike. Since 2016, those numbers show an 83% increase in child exploitation online. Now, a sergeant with the Colorado Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force says that one in seven children are contacted by a predator every single day. Just frightening numbers. The sergeant wished to remain anonymous due to his undercover work to catch those sexual predators, but he says the access to smartphones and apps has made it easier for predators to track their victims. Anytime you're dealing with child predators, they're going to look and be involved in places where there are children. And those places are apps he says to look out for like Snapchat, Meet Me, Instagram, and Pinterest. Now, if you or your child has noticed any unusual behavior online, it's important to report it to the Internet Crimes Against Children website, which is a national database. There's also one here in Colorado. Drew Engelbart, Channel 2 News. All right, thank you much, Drew. Time right now, 620. We continue to follow that breaking news out of Littleton. Yeah, a live look at South Santa Fe. Two people killed following a police chase, and sadly, it seems like those people victims were not involved. Innocent civilians. Yep. Plus, we take a look at how a teacher is using skiing to help her students learn. All right, guys, pinpoint weather alert day. We also have freezing fog this morning, and that's just a prelude to what we're going to have later today. You can see some of the timing here in the forecast and the temperatures are running much colder than forecast already. So we're looking at teens and 20s for the rest of the day with snow two to five inches on the way for the afternoon evening rush hour. And so coming up here just after 630, I'll definitely pinpoint uh, all the locations up and down the front range and how much snow we're expecting. There's definitely some deeper pockets with heavier amounts. We'll look at those coming up here in just a few. But Ken, right now over to you for a look at the time saver traffic. And we're going to continue to monitor this situation on the south side of the city. The closure at Santa Fe and Mineral. A live look at it. Jim Hooley is there gathering the very latest details. But this scene is going to be active throughout the morning rush. I would be surprised if they opened it before 9 o'clock. So look for those delays. Both directions of Santa Fe closed. Mineral dealing with the closure and the light rail lines that leave the C&D lines from this area are also impacted because the light rail station is currently blocked. That's basically right at that intersection. Metro Denver, the delays across I-70 are there, and it, they are dealing with traction laws uh, off to the west. So we'll show you these drought and trip times here, guys, coming up. All right, thanks, Ken. Uh, keep us updated. My favorite movie, Dancing with Wolves. That's well, my favorite movie. Is it really? Are you kidding me? Well, it may not be the best idea, but you can pretend while you stay at Kevin Costner's house. He's got a home in Aspen, and it's for rent. Please tell me it has a theater room where we can watch Dances with Wolves. Uh, wouldn't that be yep. a fantasy? As you can imagine, it's a beautiful home. Uh, there are three separate homes on the property. It's 160 acres. 34 people can sleep comfortably. Nobody needs a sleeping bag. Nobody needs a couch. There are two sledding hills, two ponds stocked with trout. If you're wondering how much, it's a one-week minimum stay for you to rent this, and it'll cost you the bargain basement price 
of $250,000. Really? Yeah. Well, I just, if it, if it took 34 people up per night, it would cost $882. A That's person? not bad. That's not bad if uh, you want to no? just, okay. but That's you got to cool. do it for a whole week. Okay. That'll get bad. I don't have that many friends. <laughs> well, plenty, uh, you'll find them. <laughs> Planning a romantic dinner for Valentine's Day. It's a week from Thursday. Yelp has a list of the most romantic restaurants in the entire country. Six Colorado spots made the list. Okay. In Denver, you have Root Down, Beautiful. an Odyssey Italian restaurant. You've been to Odyssey? I haven't. Me either. In Boulder, you have the Mountain Sun Pub and Brewery. You've been there. Then you have French Alpine Bistro. That's up in Aspen. And the rabbit hole is down in Colorado Springs. And Social is in Fort Collins. I don't know where the Social is. but Anyway, there's well, a Social Friday, in are, Fort Collins. Are you taking your wife out for that Valentine's Day? No, we don't believe in Valentine's Day. I don't believe in it. It's not no. like Santa Claus. It it's exists. A made up, it's a made-up day. And Valentine's Day should be any day. Each day is Valentine's exactly. Day. This guy's a romantic. <laughs> hey, it's a big morning for weather. It's a big morning for traffic. And last night, it was a big evening for the president. He called for unity as he addresses members of Congress. And we're taking a look at the State of the Union speech and reactions that he's getting this morning from that speech. And we're up in the Eisenhower Tunnel as our next storm moves into Colorado. Just some light snow and about 30 mile an hour wind gusts so far this morning. We'll have a live report of conditions up here in the high country coming up. Six thirty on your Wednesday morning. We begin with more breaking news. This out of the Stapleton area. A man has been hit and killed by the A-line train. Yeah, Channel 2's Emily Allen is at the scene. Emily, we understand the trains are running again. That's right. And so we haven't gotten the official word from RTD, but we have now seen three trains pass by us with passengers on their way to the airport, passing by right in front of us with passengers on those trains. So we're taking that as a sign that the A-line is up and running, even though we haven't gotten the official word yet from RTD that the A-line has resumed service. Let's show you guys video of what it looked like earlier at this scene. We know that there was a lot of police out here investigating what they said was a train versus pedestrian. Police went tell us why they thought that pedestrian was on those tracks, said that that was part of the investigation, but that pedestrian ended up dying out here in that car, in that uh, train versus pedestrian. In the meantime, if you are driving out here, all the roads are back up and running, so you'll be able to make it through here smoothly. And as we're reporting now, we are seeing that A-line move back and forth as well. Emily Allen, Channel 2 News. All right, thank you much, Emily. Authorities have also confirmed that two people were killed in a serious crash on Santa Fe in Littleton. Both directions shut down near the Aspen Grove Shopping Center. There is no estimated time for reopening. The RTD Mineral Station also closed. That means the C&D lines will start and end at the downtown Littleton Station, and we'll update you yeah. on that story throughout the morning tragic, as well. Tragic story. Apparently, cops were chasing two stolen cars. One of those stolen cars hit uh, another car not involved and killed those two people yeah. inside. So it's a real story. loss. Yeah. All right, another top story this half hour. Two Denver police officers who stopped a reporter from filming an arrest are now facing disciplinary action. I'm Chris Parenti in for Natalie Tisdall. We're glad you're waking up with yeah, us. Yeah, and I'm Ernie Bjorkman. Take a listen to this. Stand up straight and act like a lady. Stand up and act like a lady. And act like a lady. Susan Green mm -hmm. is the woman you see in this police body cam video. She is the editor for Colorado Independent. It all happened back on July 5th in downtown Denver. Cops placed Green in handcuffs when she refused to stop filming a naked man in handcuffs while police were trying to take him into custody. Two officers, James Brooks and Adam Paulson, now put Green in the back of a squad car. She was never charged with any crime, but she was improperly detained. Green says she felt compelled to speak out about that incident. I am a white a uh, woman in Denver who this happened to in broad daylight right across from the state capitol, and I know all too well that these types of things happen to people of color and people much more vulnerable than me, and someone needs to call them on it. Well, Green believes the police department should uh, promote training on First Amendment rights as well as gender sensitivity. She has now hired a lawyer and is looking into further legal action against the city of Denver. And here at 633 on your Wednesday, let's take a live look outside. This is our Lookout Mountain camera. Mm. Is that not stunning? That is fog, and when that fog is settling in on top of Denver, it's turning to freezing fog, right, Chris? Well, I'll tell you what, guys. Hearing a lot of this, Ernie and uh, Chris, take a look at this uh, live camera. Not only is it a freezing fog, but it's also some snow showers coming out. 
uh, because it's so cold. Uh, the fog, we have fog in the air, and that fog, that's just moisture suspended. And when it's this cold, we're in the teens right now. It's just falling. And look at this. I mean, we are completely socked in on this uh, Bacchus and Shanker camera. You can see the roadways right down here. They're actually starting to get covered in a little bit of light snow flurries or even snow pellets down there right now. It's amazing. It's all down here. If you look at this back at Shanker camera, this is from Lookout Mountain. It is completely clear. We're just socked in down here. This is where the city's at down here below all of that. We do have a winter weather advisory in effect until tomorrow morning for two to five inches of snow for the entire front range, and there may be even pockets of heavier accumulations than that. So here it is on our um, pinpoint weather alert day. Here are some of the reasons and things to watch out for. We do expect some snow bands to set up for the afternoon evening rush hour, two to five inches. And again, there may be a couple of spots with more. That evening drive is going to be slick with temperatures. They've already hit their max. We're going to be in the teens and 20s for the rest of the day. So there's your snow increasing across the West Slope. Now it is moving towards Summit County and towards the tunnel where it is increasing and the snow will be picking up there because the whole thing will be shifting towards Denver in the front range. And here it is timing it out on our future radar. Here it comes by the noon hour. It's on the doorstep. And there it starts to move in and it's already in play for the evening rush hour. Here it is at four, five, six, these different pockets of deep blue moving through. And then by about nine o'clock tonight, it starts to taper off into tomorrow morning. But we just talked about the tunnel in the mountains. They're getting a lot of snow. It's starting to develop up there right now. And that's where meteorologist Christine Rapp is. She's up at the Eisenhower Tunnel this morning. Hey, Christine, what are you seeing up there? Yeah, hey, good morning, Chris. Yeah, as you mentioned, we're just kind of getting started up here in Summit County. Very light flurries as we get your morning started up here. I will say the biggest issue so far this morning is the wind gusting so far here. If we're at the beast, about 30 miles per hour, and that's creating that wind chill down into the single digits. So we've noticed the CDOT plows up and down I-70 here this morning, making sure conditions are as clear and uh, well treated as possible. But if you are doing any traveling along I-70, just just a heads up, this was a story we brought to you as breaking news yesterday of that rock slide in the Glenwood Canyon area. Both lanes, eastbound lanes, have been reopened. One westbound lane is reopened. So good news if this is on your agenda for today to travel through that area, which, hey, they got it done in a good amount of time because the snow is on its way. And here in Summit County, we are expecting it to pick up in intensity as we head through the heart of the morning drive. So, of course, we're going to stay out here. We'll keep you guys posted. Posted, but for now, reporting live in Summit County, meteorologist Christine Rapp, Channel 2 News. Let's set it indoors to Ken. And Ken, I know you already have a traffic alert already here this morning. Yeah, it's been a very busy one, Christine. Uh, we're starting off to the west, uh, further west of where you are, but an indication of what the semi drivers are dealing with. Now, uh, these guys are off onto the side, chaining it up, and the same laws apply to the semi drivers that apply to the first responders or to crashes or to anybody on the side of the highway. Slow down or move over, because these guys are out here working in these elements, trying to keep keep these uh, big rigs safe. They got to chain it up and take those chains off. And they are at, uh, asking that all of us kind of give those guys the space they need. Uh, Metro Denver, we've got a quiet start, but a delayed start for sure. Santa Fe and Mineral still dealing with a lot of delays through here. The investigation, the closure continues. Jim Hooley will be giving us updates throughout the morning as to the situation that led to that crash and that closure. Speeds along 225 and 70. There's a good chance anything that's elevated does have the potential for ice. I-70 had some lingering construction east of town and 270 and 25 are still backed up. So the accident load in the city is pretty calm, but some of these delays are just indicating that it's congestion related as you come in from Brighton and you head out towards the airport. But that Santa Fe and Mineral deal, that's impacting a lot of those people that are riding the C and the D lines. Guys. All right, thank you much, Ken. A second summit between the United States and North Korea is now officially on the agenda. President Trump made the announcement during last night's State of the Union address. The more confidence they can have that their assets may be able to survive the initial stages of a conflict. Pretty sure that's not President Trump nor the State of the Union. But uh, either way, <laughs> President Trump will meet with Kim Jong-un on February 27th and 28th in Vietnam. However, there's new potentially troubling information coming out about Pyongyang. A U.N. Security Council diplomat said a confidential U.N. report found that Kim's regime is hiding nuclear and ballistic weapons from possible U.S. strikes. 
the more they disperse it, the more confidence they can have that their assets may be able to survive the initial stages of a conflict. I, right. have, I have no idea who that dude is. He's he looks about, like a guy I went to high school he's with. talking about those missiles. I know what he's talking about, but I don't know who he is. <laughs> the two leaders met in Singapore last year where Kim agreed to work toward complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. So far, there's no concrete proof that that's actually happening. A State Department special representative is now heading to Pyongyang today to coordinate details regarding the summit. All right, let's get back to President Trump. He struck a diplomatic tone to a divided Congress during his State of the Union address last night. And of course, we were all looking at Nancy Pelosi's reaction to Mr. Trump last night. I'm just praying we're not going to show that high school <laughs> guy that I went to algebra class with. you keep with. in touch with him? I, I saw him this morning. <laughs> let's now see if we can actually go to our reporter, Karen Kaifa, from Capitol Hill with highlights of the speech. President Trump's State of the Union address lasted 82 minutes, and at times it seemed like there were two speeches happening. On the one hand, he took aim at Democrats for investigations into things like his campaign and his finances. On the other hand, he called on Democrats to work with him on issues like infrastructure and lowering prescription drug costs. On a contentious Capitol Hill, the president breached unity. The state of our union is strong. To a divided Congress. The only thing that can stop it are foolish wars, politics, or ridiculous partisan investigations. With Democratic Speaker Nancy Pelosi over his shoulder and scores of newly elected women watching in front of him. Don't sit yet. You're going to like this. We also have more women serving in Congress than at any time before. Many critical of the president's demand for border wall funding that led to the longest government shutdown in history. Walls work and walls save lives. During the Democratic response, former Georgia gubernatorial candidate Stacey Abrams Very challenged Trump. Obama. America is made stronger by the presence of immigrants, not walls. Still, President Trump touched on bipartisan topics like infrastructure projects, cutting the cost of prescription drugs, and ending HIV in the U.S. Together, we will defeat AIDS in America and beyond. Trump also touted his foreign policy agenda. Chairman Kim and I will meet again on February 27th and 28th in Vietnam. Now, the president and Congress have until February 15th to work together to keep the government funded. So let's work together, compromise, and reach a deal that will truly make America safe. At 641, the traffic alert impacting the light rail lines and the drive down along Santa Fe and Mineral. This is a live look at it. Jim Hooley is live with the very latest details. And I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer still watching that snow. It's moving through the mountains and is headed towards the front range. So we're going to have freezing fog to start this morning and then snow this afternoon. I'll pinpoint those snow totals coming up here in just a few minutes. And the A-line has reopened after a deadly accident this morning that killed a man on the tracks overnight. Plus, a bizarre accident involving an e-cigarette that actually kills a guy in Texas. You got to hear how it happened. Time right now, 642. You're watching Daybreak on Colorado Zone Channel 2. news out of Littleton this morning. Santa Fe closed, South Santa Fe closed in both directions now as police investigate a double fatal accident. All of this started with a chase out of Douglas County near Daniels Park, a stolen car being chased by deputies that hit the vehicle coming westbound on Mineral with two people inside it when they got to the intersection. Those two people, two innocent people, dead this morning. And this closure, an extended closure now, will be going on for all of the morning rush hour. In Littleton, I'm Jim Hooley. Channel 2 News. I'm Emily Allen covering breaking news here at Quebec and Smith. This is the site of an accident earlier that ended up shutting down the A-line temporarily. Police saying that this was a pedestrian versus train accident on here that shut down the tracks. No word on why that pedestrian was on those tracks. Now this morning we are seeing that the A-line is back up and running, taking passengers from Union Station to the airport. It was closed for a portion of this morning, but it is up and running now. Emily Allen, Channel 2 News. All right, thank you, Emily. We have a pinpoint weather alert day. It's gone from fog to freezing fog, soon to snow, and it could definitely have a major impact on your afternoon commute.
The man of the hour recently engaged Chris Tomer. Joining me now to talk more about it. It's going to be a tough afternoon, isn't it? Well, I tell you, it's starting out tougher than we thought it would with yeah. the freezing fog this morning and freezing drizzle. So what we'll do here, Chris, and I appreciate the intro on that. Uh, here <laughs> we go with uh, some of the cameras. It is snowing. This is over Vail Vail Pass right here. It's coming down pretty good. And this is a kind of a recent thing. The snow is picking up in intensity in the mountains. This is the colder, more intense part of the storm. It is now snowing a little bit heavier up here at the tunnel right now. This is where meteorologist Christine Rapp is. You can see some of the snow coming down. Loveland ski area is right across uh, the highway. Back down here, we are just socked in with this thick fog. And you can see some of the white on the ground. It is falling as a little bit of snow and at times a freezing drizzle. So here's the hour by hour percentages. This morning we have that freezing fog. Then it's a snow event into the evening rush hour. The percentages all go up and then they drop back down as we kind of roll through the night. So we'll time this out on the pinpoint future cast. Here comes this snow and this is lunchtime. So we may have light snow up in northern Colorado and then it moves over the top of Denver. And if you're in one of these deeper areas of blue, you will get more snow, just like with that last storm system we had. And then it's going to snow out over the eastern plains. This is a much colder storm. I mean, we're only in the teens and 20s for the rest of the day. And so at 6 o'clock, we're still in the snow, and then it begins to fade out after that and taper into tomorrow morning. And that would be the case in the mountains as well. You can see a lot of 2 to 5 inch amounts here across the front range. Zooming in on that, lots of 2 to 5 inch amounts, a couple of ones on the south east side. So the pinpoint 7 day forecast, we will fall through the 20s into the teens for the rest of the day. Tomorrow's in the 20s, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all in the 40s and much drier once we get into the weekend. All right, Ken, over to you for a look at the, uh, the time saver traffic and all this fog this morning. Isn't it coming in yeah. thick? Boy, uh, Highway 36 up and around McCaslin. Uh, so the rules for the fog, uh, high beams really don't do any good. Fog lights, and if your lights are automatic, as we get deeper into the rush and the sun pops up, if they're not on, manually turn them on, but don't forget to turn them off, uh, and then watch your spacing. Uh, so far, the Metro Denver Drive, at least along Highway 36, as you travel in and out of the Boulder area, it's foggy, but moving along pretty good. 25, uh, 270, these routes along I-70 east of downtown, they are backed up, uh, but the uh, A-line is now back running. You just heard the very latest Santa Fe close in both directions. Mineral looking at a closure. The light rail lines are impacted. There is no bus bridge at that location, uh, so the C and D lines, those riders have to find another route, and boy, Santa Fe is going to back up towards uh, 470, so avoid that. Uh, you can stick with uh, C-470. You can take it all the way down towards Park Meadows. You can also jump off, use Wadsworth, Kipling as an alternate route, and 285. You could connect through there, but drive times today, not too bad along that northern side up and out of the Castle Rock area. 225 is slow through Aurora, but no new crashes have been called out along the interstates, so we are continuing to monitor those problems. We'll give you an update even along I-70 off to the west. All right, thank you much, Ken. In the news this morning, the El Paso County Sheriff's Office honoring fallen deputy Micah Flick one year after he died in a shootout with a suspected car thief. Two wreath laying ceremonies were held. One was at the sheriff's office, the other at the jail. Three other officers and a bystander were also wounded in the shootout. The gunman was killed. And speaking of, that innocent bystander is now suing the three law enforcement agencies and all of the individual officers involved in the operation, including the estate of Deputy Flick. We're hearing from that man's lawyer this morning. 28-year-old Thomas Villanueva was paralyzed in the shooting. He was just walking home to get lunch when he was caught in the crossfire and shot by the suspected car thief. The lawsuit alleges that law enforcement should have never allowed Villanueva to be in the area during the attempted takedown. The last thing we wanted to do was involve Officer Flick in that. But again, because the law mandates it, because the, the Thomas's ability to get any assistance could be thrown out without that, we were forced to include him. But we have asked that the county accept responsibility so that Officer Flick and all the other officers can immediately be released. The lawsuit alleges that none of the officers were in uniform. Villanueva says he had no idea he was walking into the middle of a police operation. New this morning, a Fort Worth, Texas man killed when an e-cigarette explodes as he was trying to use it. 24-year-old William Brown apparently died from a stroke after fragments from that canister severed a main artery. Police tell us the brand he was using is known to have safety issues, but it's unclear what company makes the brand that he was using. Hey, Colorado ranked as one of the healthiest states in the union. That's the good news. The bad news is that teens are using e-cigarettes at an alarming rate, twice as much as any other state. 
The hearing will be held today on a bill that would fight underage teen vaping. So about half of Colorado high school students, half of them, Ernie, say they have tried vaping nicotine. Children's Hospital is a big part of the effort to update our laws that would include e-cigarettes in banned indoor public spaces. One of those pods contains as much nicotine as an entire pack of cigarettes. And we have kids that are sometimes using one, two, even three of these in a given day. Adolescent brains are particularly susceptible to the effects of nicotine and the addiction that comes along with that. The Rocky Mountain Smoke Free Alliance tells us that underage kids, quote, get these vape pens from their parents or relatives, or they buy them online where they don't even have to verify their age. The proposal is likely to draw opposition from those who say vaping actually helps cut down on traditional smoking. So the hearing will begin at 1.30 this afternoon. Keep it tuned right here to Channel 2 for an update tonight at 7. All right, not much of a surprise. A new study finds that chronic pain is the biggest reason Americans are signing up for medical marijuana. Researchers studied medical marijuana programs in 15 states back in 2016 and 17. After chronic pain, stiffness from multiple sclerosis and nausea from chemotherapy are the other top reasons people partake. Right now, medical cannabis legal in 33 states. Of course, Colorado, one of them, and the District of Columbia. SWAT teams in Washington state swarmed a park there to take down some suspicious characters. Officers say the people in the park were armed and they were soon outnumbered. All right, here's the video. In the end, Look it's out. the SWAT team versus the kids with the snowballs. <laughs> the battle of the officers versus the kids. And we, we're told, oh, uh oh, the kids won. The video was posted to the department's Facebook page. It has racked up hundreds of thousands of views. It is your viral video of the morning. Good to see some good old fashioned fun. Yeah. My brother used to use ice balls. That's not fair. That hurt. That got, always I, hurt. I yep. got cut by one one time. Yep. All right, uh, Chris Tober now with a weather alert today because the fog and freezing fog is already starting to form in Denver. Yeah, absolutely, guys. So I'm just taking a look at the uh, the future cast. I want to use the zoomed in version here to the metro area, and I'll start this over from this morning so you can kind of see how this all plays out. We have fog and freezing fog this morning as the clock rolls ahead towards the lunch hour today. Um, it will show you anytime now. There we go. Uh, headed towards the lunch hour. Here comes this band of snow coming out of the mountains where it's building right now. And then it comes in. And these are those types of banded areas of snow where one neighborhood picks up one to two, three inches in an hour. Whereas a few miles down the road, they don't have anything yet. And so here it is at four o'clock. It's already in play and on the roads. Temperatures are going to be in the teens and 20s, so this is the evening rush. It's going to be snowy. You can see those deep blue areas coming through all the way through the night, and then it tapers off by tomorrow morning. Again, accumulation numbers are going to wide, be widely ranging from 2 to 5, even some pockets of 6 and maybe even a 7 as you work your way west and up into the foothills. So these numbers, Ken, are what we're going to have to deal with here for the evening rush hour. It's going to be a d dirty drive home, isn't it? Yes. Uh, it's a mess right now, Chris. Uh, you're dealing with a full closure along Santa Fe down at the mineral lines. This is a live look uh, at that location. Traffic is jamming up. Coming up, I'll give you the alternate routes. All right, thanks, Ken. We now know that the crash at Santa Fe and Mineral has killed two innocent people. Their vehicle T-boned by the suspect. Douglas County Sheriffs were in pursuit at the time. The driver taken into custody. We'll have more on that when we come back. And Harley Davidson is going green. This is not your granddad's or grandma's oh, Harley. No. The company recently debuting this new bike in Colorado. We'll do, hear Ken Clark's opinion. Yeah, do not show it to Ken Clark. Just don't. <laughs>